Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Avenger Pestridge. Welcome to another flight simulation video. Today we're continuing our series of uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator installation guide. Um, going through the next part of the setup. Uh, in the previous video we looked at the installation. Um, today we're going to look at the settings for graphics. Now again, we've already set our controls. If you were installing it for the very first time, then um, it will come to a point where it asks you, oh, we want to set your um, quality level for you based on your hardware. Allow that and just go with what they say for the for the moment. Then it will ask you, like we've already detected your controllers, we'd like to assign those. Just allow that as well and continue. And when you finally load up the sim, you will get to the main menu. But when you get to this point now, in all honesty, you haven't actually fully um, installed Microsoft yet. Um, if we go to the profile, we go to Content Manager, there is actually going to be things that aren't installed yet, which is all the um, world updates. So if we go to, for instance, uh, back to the main screen, and we go to the Marketplace, and we go to Full Catalog, and then freeware or free content, uh, yes, free content, you'll see that all this here hasn't actually been installed yet. Um, although, it's to say I own both of these, World Update 1 and this airport, but it hasn't actually been installed yet. So, um, this is, you have to do this separately, but don't install it yet. We're going to come back at the end of this video to install this, okay? So, you want to head um, into your options menu. Now, again, if this is your first time installing this, you're going to be asked about quality and controllers as part of the process of getting to this menu. If you already have it installed on a, a, a Windows, uh, if you already have installed it, sorry, on your PC, then it won't ask you this and you'll have to go in and set it yourself, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So, um, to be honest, um, what the way I'm going to do it might be a little bit different than you perhaps have seen. Um, just go with it for the moment, and I'll explain everything, okay? So first off, I'm going to choose the low-end global rendering quality profile, okay? There's th four profiles. There's ultra, there's high, there's medium, and there's low. Now, I have a 4K display. Um, I actually find that the sim performs way better in 1080p mode, okay? Um, and then it'll scale it up. On my display into 4k um, but it won't be a 4k image but in all honesty the difference between a full 4k image being rendered on my PC and a 1080p uh, being rendered on my PC is very negligible in terms of you can determine a difference but not enough to actually the amount of computer resources that are needed to to run it to 4k I might as well run it at 1080p and then I can bump up a few more details down here below. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So although I do have a HDR monitor, so I will turn that on. Um, we've selected low end. Now I have locked my um, settings in the NVIDIA control panel. So if we open that up, I will quickly 
run through those settings with you. Now, I'm a firm believer in locking uh, frame rate to 30 for flight simulation. Um, I think you, it performs way better because you can also increase your graphical detail. If you try and render at 60 frames, your PC effectively is having to work twice as hard against, say, doing it at 30 FPS. Um, and therefore, you have to kind of almost limit your... Um, terrain detail because at the end of the day your pc is locked to the performance of the hardware it can only do so much so you can either set your settings um for 30 fps and increase your graphical detail or double your frame rate to 60 and therefore you would have to limit some graphic detail again there is no performance drop in terms of frame rates. Um, if you lock it to 30, you do not really perceive a difference for the motion between 30 and 60. I think 30 actually looks way a little bit more cinematic. Um, so I turn the V-Sync off in the simulator because I've already locked it in the hardware of the uh, GPU control panel. So we don't even set the frame rate or the v-sync in here my monitor is uh set to 30 hertz in the control panel um for my gpu and uh my vertical sync is on to it so it's locked to 30 hertz which means the frame rates that i also the frame rate limit that i also place in my nvidia control panel is set to uh 33 so it's kind of like locked to 30 basically so i will always achieve 30 fps in the sim uh, render scaling, because I'm rendering it to a uh, 1080p machine, effectively I should actually choose this to go up to 4K to match what my actual monitor is. So it should actually say 100. That's what I should actually be uh, rendering it to. So it kind of up renders. So it kind of up renders, but I'm actually going to, you know, lock it to 1080p. Um, and we're going to see what happens first. And then I might have to change that afterwards. Um, and that's really it. I'm not going to change anything else because the, the preset for low end is already set here. So we're actually going to go with that. Now, there are a few other things we're going to tweak here. Um, don't have to worry about camera mode. That's fine. The sound. I actually like the legacy uh, music. So uh, I'll keep that. Um spatial sound can come on that's fine i don't actually like the warnings so i just put them to 50 percent i think the engine sounds as well they, they i think the default ones are a bit whiny so we'll put that to 75. i'd rather hear the atmospherics uh we're gonna put voices to 80. Um, which will most likely be ATC voices and stuff like that. And, and the rest we're going to leave as default. Um, I'll turn the music down just for now, but I would normally have that up. Now, this video, guys, replaces the one I've already done on my channel. Um, that I did when it first came out. So, uh, aircraft traffic type, going to turn to real time online. Uh, we're not going to show the nameplates. Um, I've turned down these uh, airport densities um, because um, it will help with performance. Um, we're also gonna we're gonna leave that. Um, use generic plane models for AI traffic. Uh, no, I don't want generic anything. Uh, and I'm gonna change that to high. Right, in terms of data now, this is, uh, I think, an important one. Um, because I'm a streamer, um, and because I, I probably most likely will be streaming this, if I set my uh, bandwidth level to unlimited, Microsoft tends to hog all the bandwidth, which means my stream will stutter. Um, I, I, I honestly believe that setting this to 40, which is why my download, by the way, was restricted to 40, um, will help a streamer better because the sim's only going to use 40 which means the rest goes towards your stream so that won't stutter now for purposes of what we have to do in this video i'm going to change it to unlimited but i will lock that to 40 megabits normally so set that there we will turn a rolling cache on and i'm going to reset that to uh 10 um gig now the location of the rolling cache, uh, if I go here, 
Um, my uh, E drive is where my SIM is. So I'm actually going to set the rolling cache to be on here. Um, I don't want it to take up all of the space though. So I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to put a folder in here called rolling cache. And uh, that's where it's going to, to be. So I'm now going to redirect the pathway for this uh, off there. Um, I guess it has to be scenery cache, but I don't know. Um, we're going to put it on the E drive and no E and in the rolling cache folder. Select that. That's where it's going to live. So um, we're going to change the limit, as I say, to 10. So that it's, it's going to have 10 gig of rolling cache. I could increase it really because this drive has got like 112. So actually, do you know what? I'm going to say 25. I'm going to say 25. So 25 gig of rolling cache. That's on. Uh, unlimited bandwidth. No data limitation. That's fine. That's all good. So there we go. Uh, miscellaneous. Uh, la, 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 la. That's all fine. Accessibility, that's all fine. Um, won't turn developers mode on. That's it, guys, for now. Basically, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to um, get into the sim once this rolling cache has uh, been downloaded. Uh, we're going to get into the sim. We're going to do a quick test flight, and um, then we'll see what the settings are like, and then we're going to come back because... I feel that the best way to tune the sim is to kind of like have a setting that is kind of a little bit below what your hardware can achieve and therefore when you go to a heavy city like say New York um, and there's loads of traffic you can still achieve your frame rate there as well so we start low and we start working our way forward into the ultra setting um, my PC by the way my specs are down below they are quite good um, there I've got a really good PC so it should be able to handle this not a problem although I am recording a video at the same time so um, I'm actually going to stop the video um, when I'm testing because um, it will affect the performance of the test and therefore I won't actually know but when we do come back to the menu I will resume the recording then and you can see because if I ran the recording and you saw what I was you know in the sim it, I would actually get false results. Results, sorry, because uh, you know the the PC is also having to record this. So um, we'll come back and we'll head back into the menu. Uh, one quick thing to note um, as I go into this, um, I haven't actually installed any mods. Okay, this is a default uh, version of the sim. Um, so. Please, if you if you run ahead and start doing things um, sort of against what these videos will do, then you'll be altering the results. If you stick to what exactly goes on in this video, you, most likely you will have the same results. Um, and in all honesty, I don't have a problem with the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So for those that do, maybe they have done things differently. But leave mods out of it just for now. Um, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But... Um, yeah, I'm going to go test uh, my settings and then we'll go back to the menu system and we'll do a few tweaks. One thing I will say, when you first actually load into your simulator, um, just go to the exterior view and toggle your camera around like this, okay? It's very important that when you first load into your sim that you actually toggle your camera around um, and allow the rest of the world to load in as well. Um, if you uh, if you do this, um, the rest of the the scenery around you is actually loading in, and you will find that you have a much smoother performance um, than if you uh, if you didn't do this. So, uh, literally, just do a 360 both outside the cockpit and inside the cockpit. Okay, so I went into the the sim. Um, I started on low end. Uh, everything was absolutely fine. I uh, proceeded up to the medium setting. Went back into the sim. Absolutely fine. I even tried the ultra ultra setting. Um, still, actually, really smooth. So now that I know that I can really run this this on any setting, I'm actually going to go in and we're going to tweak the settings. Okay. Now, first off, in the data section, 
what we're going to do is turn off the photogrammetry because I actually don't actually like it. Um, it gives the buildings this melted look. I don't actually think they've got it sussed yet um, I think there's still it's something that they're working on it doesn't obviously appear in every single city in the world either it's just in certain cities but I do I do prefer uh, the the look of the world with that turned off now it does replace the um, the buildings in the world with sort of just generic sort of autogen um, Whereas if you have it turned on, it downloads actual models of what these buildings really do look like in real life and inserts them in. But the problem is, off to the distance, everything looks like a basic triangle or rectangle shape. And it's only when you get closer does it actually fill in the detail. And sometimes you have to kind of do a pass around the building for it to fully load in this detail of the model. Um, it kind of looks like a apocalyptic zombie you know derelict town um until you've actually done a few fly arounds uh, and then it sort of then starts to fill in nicely so it's like i don't think they've got it down just correct yet so until they do i'll turn it off so uh in the nvidia control panel um one thing i do is i set the performance uh, so preference, uh, put it on performance and then click on use advanced 3D image settings. Um, by clicking performance, you're instructing your graphics card that you want more uh, increased performance than you do graphical quality of detail. Although we are going to choose it ourselves anyway, but this puts your graphics card into a state of performance as opposed to quality. There are a few functions that aren't accessible in this menu that are determined by that slider. So, uh, um, in the global, literally don't uh, ch change anything here from what the default is. Just leave it as is. Um, but for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I've actually sharpened the uh, the image up for a little bit. I've turned off any filtering um, of AA on the graphics card because we set it in the sim itself. Um, we've turned on gamma correction. Um, and we've turned on uh, the CDU for the GPUs to set to all. Um, I lock my frame rate to 33, which I've explained why before, and obviously chosen my graphics card for GL rendering. Um, I prefer maximum performance for the power management mode, and I turn on shader cache. I actually don't have that set on. That was a bit weird. Um, allow for the uh, negative level of detail bias. Set to high performance for your texture filtering, which is... I actually set that exact to the opposite in, um, in P3D, but I find actually that in Microsoft Flight Sim, it works better with high performance. I turn off trilinear optimization. I turn on threaded optimization. Turn on triple, buff triple, triple buffering. Turn on vertical sync. Now, I don't actually use VR, but I've set this to three, okay? Um, but it doesn't actually affect me because I um, I don't use VR. But uh, that's my settings for here. Um, like I said before, I lock my refresh rate to 30, set my native display, and use the NVIDIA color settings because I have a HDR monitor. Mine's set to dynamic range full. If you don't have a HDR monitor, set that to limited. Um, otherwise, your colors won't look correct. Uh, the rest of it's pretty much basic, but I also do turn off the audio on my devices because I only ever wear headphones. So just the picture is coming through the HDMI, no audio. Okay, so back into the sim. Again, we've turned off photogrammetry. That's fine. All the buildings you can see here have changed. Going back into the graphics setting now, um, I'm going to leave this on ultra, but we are going to tune this now down below. So for instance, this one, I actually, uh, I think I prefer DLAA. Um, again, we're looking for performance. Okay. So level of detail, um, we're setting that to 100. Um, the terrain vector detail, uh, we'll leave at ultra. We want all of the detail there. Buildings, we're going to set to medium. There is literally no difference between medium and ultra. Um, trees, I'm going to set to medium as well. Um, 
grass and bush uh, either high or ultra now i'm going to try the ultra state because there is a difference between high and ultra but we're going to see if we can get away with that now object level of detail um this adjusts the level of detail for the objects now um i actually have got it set to 200 and i can get away with that i'm actually going to set this down to 25 just to see what happens okay um, volumetric clouds, uh, we're going to go with uh, the ultra setting. Texture resolution, we're going to go with ultra. Um, anthropic filtering, um, anywhere between 4 to 16. Now, I'm going to set 4 initially um, and only raise it if I have to. The more AA you set, the higher performance it takes. If you've got a low end PC, if you, basically, if you just match the texture resolution, to you as close as you can to your display then you don't need a lot of AA okay um, texture subsampling I'm gonna set to four um, I think it actually should go on eight in all honesty but uh, we'll try that um, texture synthesis um, we're gonna actually go on low um, water waves we're gonna try the high setting uh, shadow maps now for me I'm not a big believer in the shadow quality I believe shadows should look degraded I think they should look as as bad as they can at the lowest settings you still will get shadows but um, I do believe that uh, they shouldn't look as good because they kind of should look a bit blurry they shouldn't look sharp or defined I think the blurry ones kind of look a little bit better which means you can push contact shadows a little higher um, I'm gonna set that to high uh, windshield effects uh, we've got on ultra because like well I want to see all the you know juiciness um, ambient inclusion is going to be set to ultra reflections um, it's gonna be set to medium reflections is a real PC killer so um, I think uh, medium is a good sort of performance to quality uh, ratio there. Um, light shafts, we're going to go with low because at the end of the day, I'm not that sort of jazzed about having light shafts, but at least they will be there. Bloom, I'm going to turn off. Uh, depth of field, we're going to go with ultra. Motion blur is going to be ultra. Uh, lens correction is going to be off as well as lens flare. I'm not really a big jazz of that. Now, because of all this, I could probably push this up to uh, high for the cockpit refresh rate. I'm going to leave it on medium because these displays in the cockpit actually do take quite a lot of performance to render. So we're going to apply that and I'm going to restart the sim to allow some of these changes to take effect. And I'm going to restart my PC because I also did um, change something in my NVIDIA control panel and you should always restart your PC when you do that. So we'll come right back in a moment. Now, I thought I'd just quickly show you um, a little uh, thing here of the sim. Obviously, because I'm recording, uh, the sim is a little bit stuttier, stu stuttery than it was before um, I actually started the recording, so apologies for that. Um, I was actually still getting 30 frames regardless, um, and basically what what my aim for this sim is is to get 30 frames regardless of what weather I choose so if I decide to change it to a storm um, that my frame rate stays at 30 um, no matter what so if suddenly now you know because of this storm here which oh my gosh it, it's really getting bad um, my frame rate stays at 30 then that's basically what I want it's the worst possible weather uh, my frame rate to be still at my set FPS now I really do believe having a set FPS is much better than having one that's going to be jumping all around if you're trying to achieve a frame rate say of 60 then your PC is working a lot harder to uh, display that frame rate and, um, you know, having to draw 60 frames every second is quite intensive for your graphics card, as opposed to trying to draw 30 frames a second. Um, it's half as intense, so therefore, you can actually push your graphic detail 
a little bit higher. Um, so the stormy weather is the best way to test your your settings, I believe. Um, because if you can achieve your set frame rate, which mine is 30, um, in this type of weather, then you're really going to have no problem in sunny weather, or even if you're in a jet, going a little bit faster. Obviously, jets take a lot more performance um, to to manage than a small little Cessna here, but um, at the end of the day, a jet can fly above the weather, so the chances of actually flying through a weather like this in a jet is very slim, except for when you're coming into land, um, which won't happen that often. So, um, anyway, my frame rate is kind of dancing between 28 and 33, so... Um, I probably will try a little bit of you. I mean, it is hitting 30, but there is a few things where it's not. So um, I will try a few things just to really sort of, you know, nail this. The only reason I'm showing this on the screen at the moment in developer mode is because I do want to um, test it out. And the way you do it is you go into options, and the option is right there, uh, display FPS. Um, so you can, so you can actually see what's going on, you know. Um, and this is the, the dev mode, which I wouldn't recommend running as a normal habit. Um, I would recommend having it switched off, but as you can see, it's, um, it's handling it quite well. Another thing I really recommend using for this, if you use a Xbox game controller, I do believe it it handles the sim the sim handles a lot better and easier to manipulate the camera um, both internally and externally, and the control system is a lot easier using a Xbox game controller. So um, I really recommend using that instead of a stick and throttle system. Um, it's uh, it really is um, a different experience. But uh, for some reason, my, my sim here is, uh, as you can see, just underachieving those 30 FPSs that I'm looking for. So I'm going to uh, change a couple of settings. And basically, that's what I am looking for, a 30 FPS solid um, state. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in when we're, you know, at the, the normal menu. It's, uh, it's getting a bit desperate here okay so uh, just quickly brought you back in um, I've been testing various different settings so um, I did find that you know as a as a test I put it into um, full screen mode now in full screen mode all of these displays look a lot blurrier look actually a lot uh, let degraded in fact the the textures just did not look right um, and so obviously I, I put it back into windowed mode just because um, yeah I, I don't want to degrade the textures they really did look a lot worse in full screen mode um, also uh, I have re uh, well, after locking my frame rate to 30 um, I did find that the uh, the frame rate here did not hold the frame rate it was dropping below so I, I unticked that again uh, took off the the limiter inside the sim um, leaving the GPU to be uh, limit doing the limiting so you can now see it is actually holding now at 30 frames which means inside it's uh, it's smooth as butter um, and you can see that it is being limited by the GPU as well and not the sim so that's good to know there as well um, and everything looks gorgeous I mean uh, we're in stormy weather, we're in a Cessna, um, we're about to fly through um, that over there, and also I'm recording, so yeah, happy days really. Um, I do believe that uh, your sim does need to uh, have a little run in um, first before, um, you know, like spend like an hour flying around the sim first. 
and then do a few tweaks and you'll find that your frame rate does settle more after you've been flying around for a while as opposed to just getting in and then evaluating it. It's like, it's like the world's loading around you as you're uh, flying. So the longer you're in, effectively, the, the more the, the scenery is going to load in, the better performance you're going to get. If you've got a cache, a rolling cache on your hard drive, it's literally filling that hard drive up with, um, with, with scenery. So if we go to the PC here, you can see I'm already down to 92 gigs. So it, it literally has filled my rolling cache folder up here with 26 gigs worth of data, which is the world we see around, which helps me to maintain my frame rate as well. Um, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm actually quite happy. We're, we're, uh, we're in stormy weather. It's, um, we're in a Cessna. Even if I changed to a glass cockpit, the, uh, I think the PC would be able to handle it. Um, it's holding the 33 uh, limit that I set it. So, happy days, really. Now, I did actually extend that 33 to 35. So, when I restart my PC, the next time I come in, this actually will say 35 as opposed to 33. But I, I, I do think it, it's a little bit better than... It's able to hold 30 a lot better. Um, I mean, it's holding 30 right now fine. And it does say 33, so um, when I restart my PC and it says 35, it'll be not, it'll be interesting to see how smooth and buttery it is. But um, yeah, even at 30 frames per second, which it is holding, it's absolutely doing fine. Um, I just want rain on my windshield now to be able to test the rest. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for, a bit of rain. So as soon as it starts raining, I'm a happy bunny. But yeah, definitely in windowed mode to keep the textures looking a lot sharper. Obviously, I could probably up the resolution or the textures or something, but um, I'm actually really happy with the way it's looking here. I think it's looking really nice. Here we go, the rain's starting. Here we go. Now we're cooking. We need to follow the rain. Yep, now it's cooking with the rain on the windshield. And she's still holding. We're 2,000 feet off the ground as well, so there's quite a lot of detail down there. We're in stormy weather. And we're holding our 30 frames, and as you can see, butter absolute butter I'm going to turn off uh, dev mode, I think, and uh, we don't need developers mode anymore. On.
so after a little bit of uh, trial and error, I, uh, I figured out what the overblown bit was. And um, it was the HDR. HDR was um, overblowing the um, kind of look of the, the sim. So I, I turned it off now. I do believe, for me, I get a decrease in visual quality from the sim with it turned off. Um, but sadly, when I turn it on uh, for the recording and for the, um, the stream, it means that the highlights are overblown and it actually looks far worse. So basically, I think what I'm going to have to do is only um, activate it when it's just me and the sim and I'm not recording and I will get a much nicer looking experience and then deactivate it when I'm making a video or when I am recording because for some reason OBS can't handle that. It doesn't it doesn't pick it up as I see it on my display, which is a bit weird. So anyway. That's that. So anyway, I'm I'm actually quite happy with the settings now. It's getting thirty frames. Uh, and if we change the weather to storm again. When the uh, the frames sell uh, in stormy weather, thirty FPS. Um, okay, it's only a Cessna, but I'm flying quite low to the ground. Loads of autogen, loads of buildings. Still getting thirty FPS solid. I'm a happy bunny, basically. So anyway, stormy weather, thirty FPS solid. Um, okay, we're only in a Cessna, but we are quite low to the ground. Loads of autogen. Loads of buildings and trees, and um, yeah, I'm a happy bunny. I've I've got my settings exactly the way I want them. I don't know if you can hear me. It's quite loud in my ears, but um, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, close this down. Now we know this works, we can start the next phase of the installation, which is all the world updates stuff now. So um, basically, turn off developer mode. And uh, I can go now to install the rest of the sim because for some reason when you um, install initially the sim it just gives you the basic sim it just gives you sort of like the initial sim you know um, if we go to the marketplace and we go to full catalog and we go to free content we'll actually see that there's actually loads more here so for instance Aviators Club, I'll get that, and uh, waiting for that download, and basically go through anything that's in the free content. That's where the world updates are. So the J Japanese uh, Japan world update, which was the first one, USA, which was world update two, uh, the UK, which is the third, and um, the fourth one will be in there most likely by the time this video comes out, which is France and sort of Northern Europe a little bit. So um, once you've verified that your sim is working, then you can go ahead and install all the the updates. I, I really recommend you setting your um, bandwidth to unlimited for the downloading, and then you can go back in and set it to a lower rate um, if you need to, but definitely, definitely set it to unlimited I find that if it's set to 40 or anything lower, that the packages do fail unless they're downloaded quickly. Um, they're more likely to fail if it takes a while for the package to download. And when it does fail, it literally will just go back to saying download and buy and uh, buy here. It'll just literally do that. And you kind of won't even know if it was installed or not. So it, it's a little bit, but basically download it as fast as you can. Obviously, it's downloading quite fast here. Um, and then once it's downloaded, it'll automatically install it straight in. Done. That's it. We go to the content manager. And uh, as you can see, it's all up. It's all here. So um, there's some things I haven't installed. These are the world updates. But I'm going to go to the full catalog and to the free content to grab them from here. Um, toggle that to yes. So 
Um, I've already done the Japanese uh, update here, uh, but I haven't actually installed it. These two haven't been installed, so I do need to do that. So I'm just going to go away. I'm going to install all this. It's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, this one's 10 gig, so um, that's going to probably take a while. Uh, and I'll come back when we've uh, installed everything into the next video. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, this is part two. Part three um, will be coming out soon and basically part three is going to be the fine tuning of the settings now that the world updates are in and uh, making sure everything is running smooth in the aircrafts that I want to fly it in and um, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget, subscribe, like the video if you want to catch more of these uh, videos. Microsoft, I will be putting out more. If you have any questions, if you have any issues, put it down in the comments below. Feel free to join my Discord where I offer support free of charge for anybody who needs it. Thank you so much, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.